in today's video, we are doing boom cards. Yes! Woo! 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 <laughs> this has been probably the most requested video lately is on how to create boom cards. So what we will be doing is we will be starting from the planning stage. I will be using this and we will make some boom cards. Stay tuned. Oh, 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 oh. Hi everyone, my name is Lorianne and if you are new or returning, welcome here at It's All Primary. We talk, teach your side, hustles. And as I've said, most requested video right now, boom cards. How do you start boom cards? And I'll be honest with you, confession time, I have not made boom cards for months. I did make a, I made a Valentine's set not too long ago. And so this set that you are going to see is one of the first ones I've done in a while. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you from planning to uploading it or not uploading it, but publishing it to Boom Learning. And I created a Boom Cards checklist. I'm going to be following this. You can get this in my TPT store. The link will be down below but I'm just going to go through this. And it's two pages. Actually, it's three pages. Uh, one of them is just a, an extra planning page that you can uh, write your notes down and everything. But the first page, all of this is to get you to publishing on Boom Learning. And then this one is on publishing to TPT and marketing. I'm going to be doing this in a future video. So we're just going to be doing page one. I will have time codes below so that if you want to skip the planning or skip PowerPoint, you can do this in PowerPoint, Keynote, Google Slides. All you'll need to do is download it or export it as JPEGs. And that's when you get to Boom Learning. All right. So let me turn the camera around and let's get started. All right. So the first part of this is all about the planning and I have this planning sheet which is part of this document that you can again as I said is available on TPT. My theme is Valentine's Day and it's math. I'm going to be doing addition to 20. Actually I think I'm doing addition to 18. Keywords are addition and Valentine's. The learning objectives is math fact fluency. Okay. I am not going to be able to say that this meets all of the common core standard because there are a lot of components besides just the simple addition that I'm doing in this one. There are, um, there's, it's a little bit more elaborate. So if I was to say it meets the common core standard one dot one, whatever, and it doesn't, people can you know, give you a bad review for that. So I tend to side on not putting in standards unless I know I'm fully meeting that standard. Now for clip art and fonts, um, I'm actually not gonna have much of a font though there's a KG font that I will probably put on there because I tend to do KG fonts for everything. But for the clip art on this one, I'm gonna be using Creative Clips. So I'm gonna just write that down. And it's good to write it down because once you start making your boom cards, you will find that you might just forget going, okay, where did I have that? And then you spend all this time looking for it. So putting it down on your planning sheet is time saving for you later on. So I'm going to use creative clips for both the, um, I have a frame that I'm using. It's a Valentine's day frame that I think was a freebie on Creative Clips and then I have these, I think they're called heart buds and I'm going to be putting them into the corner. So when I'm making it and sometimes I try to try and draw it out, I do this and I will say, okay, so I'm going to put something here in this corner and then I'm going to put the equation there and then I may either put a multiple choice here, right? Put the question up here. So I will sometimes sketch it out on the back. I am using um, it's by Kitten Clips and it are the, these are like the candy heart numbers. So Kitten Clips. And then features, it's going to be a fill in the blank and it will also be multiple choice. 
and I'm going to provide audio instructions. So if I look at my list here, my learning objectives is just math fact fluencies, the skills, again, it's fluency, keywords, I've got it. The grades, this is going to be uh, K1, I'll put it under learning objectives, K1, maybe grade two, depending on where you live. The layout and visual design, I've got sort of sketched out the clip art and fonts. Okay, so I've got the basic information that I need. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up PowerPoint. And again, you can do this in Keynote or Google Slides. You'll just have to download them to JPEGs. Okay, but we're, let's go over to PowerPoint. And I've sort of started it, but we'll continue doing that. Okay. Here is PowerPoint. And as I mentioned, you can use Google Slides or Keynote, but I'm gonna create a new presentation. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of this slide. I want it to be able to fit perfectly into Boom Learning. So I'm gonna to go to design, it's slide size. You can do one of two and they're pretty much the same. And you can put in um, five by seven. And I don't think it's, mine's not in here. So it's, you just do it as custom. Mine is in centimeters because I'm in Canada, but you would just do five by seven here, five seven inches wide by five inches high. But I like to do standard here where it says four to three. Get rid of the boxes. The next thing I like to do is I like to format the background so that every time I add a slide, it's automatically there. And as I mentioned, I'm going to use Creative Clips and I've already got it ready here. I'm gonna use the square and I just have to adjust it a little bit. So I'm gonna use right here, the offset. If I want the background here to be in every single slide, then I go down here to where it says apply to all. And then if I, I can duplicate, right, that's easy. Or if I just go new, it should still show up. But now, now it shows up with the uh, other defaulted boxes. So you can either just duplicate or you can hit apply to all and then it will show up. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a little image here and I'll just keep them in the corners. So I'm gonna insert picture. So I can either put it here or I tend to put it on the left side and then I just rotate it horizontally and then it goes that way. And I can just do some of the other ones. Okay, so I've made three with different images. I could probably do one more. One of the other tricks you can do is you can duplicate the slide and then click on here, right click it, and then it says change picture. I have Power Pack on my Mac. I'm not sure whether that's, I'm able to do that because of Power Pack. I have also have PowerPoint for business. So I'm not sure whether which one of those is giving me that option because I did hear from somebody that they couldn't do that. Okay, so that gives me five. That way, I'm, if I'm in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, if I do five of each of these, that's 25 slides, six, whatever. It makes it easy to keep track. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start my equations. And as I mentioned, this is addition to 20. So I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to insert again my numbers. Now you can do this in Boom Learning. You could just upload your numbers or you can do it on your slides. I'm gonna show a few with slides, existing slides, and then I'll, I'll show you in Boom Learning how to create from Boom Learning as well. What I'll do is I'll add a bunch of them at the same time. So I've, again, on a Mac, I just hold down my command key and I will put a bunch of them to 10. And I will also grab the addition and the equal sign. So if I insert them all, <laughs> there they all are. I'm going to resize them to four. And I might click off them like so. Now I've made a little mess here, but that's fine. I'm just use, going to use this slide as my keeping them all on there. One of the tricks that you can do is you can drag your file. So I could drag this file here, the Candy Hearts one right over here and have it open and then I could just drag straight onto the thing that I can do that too. I'll show you here. So I'm going to go like this. I'm just going to take it and put it over here 
on my desktop. So now it's sitting right here, Candy Hearts. And then if I open it up, just hang it over there. Minimize this a little bit. So now it's sitting over on the side of my desktop. So what I can do, let me just go back to a new one here, make an extra one. I can just now drag these straight on like this. And then I just have to resize them. But I've got four plus, I can duplicate four, and then the equal sign. And this will be too big, I can see already. I could do it like that, and but put the answers down here in a multiple choice. And I will be doing something like that, but I want to put a question mark here. So I'm going to highlight them all. And I can either click on each of them with the command down, or I can just drag across them. So if I do, if I just take my mouse and drag across like this, and then they're all highlighted, either one works. And I'm going to resize. I don't think four is going to be big enough, maybe three. Okay, and then I'll just make sure these are aligned. I go up to alignment and I will distribute horizontally. So make sure that they're evenly spaced. And I'm going to take a blank one and I'll put a question mark. When I'm in Boom Learning, I often use KG fonts blank space sketch or blank ske uh, space solid. But I'll make a question mark. And it's not quite centered, so let's just again highlight them all. I'm going to move them down a little bit because I'm going to put the question up here and then I'm going to put the answers, the multiple choice answers here. Some of these I will do this blank with a box and they will fill in the blank. Okay, so let me do a few more and then I'll show you the next step. One of the things, I'll stop right here for a moment and I'll just let you know again another feature you can do in PowerPoint. I'm not sure if you can do this in Google Slides, but as, as you can see here, they're all the same color and I want to break it up by changing the color here. If I go into again Format Picture, so I've double clicked on it and this box pops up, I go to the last box, which is color, and I can change the saturation or the tone of the color, but I go down here to presets. If I just go in here and type change that one. Hmm. The only thing is they don't always have as vibrant a color, but I could do that just to make it different. Okay, I have five of this slide, and then I've got five of this using this slide. So that's 10 multiple choice altogether. I'm going to do 10 of multiple choice, and then I'm going to do 10 filling in the blank. So I'm going to take these ones, just copy them onto this one. So this one's going to then be a fill in the blank. I want to save these. First of all, I'm going to save this file because it's right now as a presentation. I'm going to call it Candy Arts Edition 220 and I'm going to put it in my hard drive so that at least that's saved. And what I want to do now is I want to export these as a JPEG and this is again on my checklist and I'm going to save them. So export and when I export them, I'm saving them. But what I want to do is it automatically defaults to PDF. I don't want a PDF, I want JPEGs. I want every slide and I want this number to be 1400 and it by 1050. 
And so now they've created all of these slides as JPEGs. Okay. And next thing we're going to do is move over to Boom Learning. We are on the home page of Boom Learning. Um, if you do not have a Boom account, yours will look a little bit different, but you'll have a sign in. You can use your Google. I would recommend you not use your school unless you are using these Boom cards for your own students. You might want to keep it separate. I, I have It's All Primary is a business email because I use it for both. But eventually, you know, a few years down the road, I won't have a class. And so I don't want anything tied to my school email. <laughs> okay, so where we're going to go is to Studio, a license for, Images, Sounds, Printies, which I have not done yet. That's something I'm kind of looking at. And you can create bundles. But we're just going to make a deck. And we're going to go to New Deck. We have not uploaded anything but I can do it while I'm in here. So I'm going to go over to cards. This second one says new cards from images. I'm going to click there. It, right here it says this feature is useful for PowerPoint users. Yes, it is. <laughs> I go to upload and I look for them. And here are all my slides. So I would just click on each of them and then just open. And now I can click on each of these. And you see how a little circle shows up to get them all into this boom deck. Go back up to where it says OK. And now it populates. All the slides are there. Now I have, should have 15, 16, 17, somewhere in there. Now when I am creating, I like to keep all my similar questions together. So I'm going to go up to Card Manager right here beside Template Card. And then I've got ones for extra. Okay, so now I can do them all together. Now we have a template card at the top. Whatever you create in this card will show up on all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the question. Some people ask me why I don't put the question in each of the slides. I don't because if I suddenly have an urge to change it, I have to remove the whole slide, which is one reason why I kind of have a couple blanks down here so that I can do something different. But I like to just be able to change what I'm thinking of writing here. And I've already had a change of what I wanted to write. So I'm just going to go into the template card. I'm going to drag a text. I'm going to put it about here. I'll find my center. Click. I can click center here, horizontal or vertical. And I'm going to double click it. And then I'm going to use a font that I've purchased. And I'm going to put it at about 32, I think. So I'm just going to say find the sum, keep it easy. And as you can see down on the side here, it populates each of them. If I look on here, it looks a bit small. So I'm going to go back up and highlight it again and make it bigger. And then I'll just recenter it. Yeah, I think I'll do that size because that looks better. Okay, now I can start playing. I was going to put the answer thing in in the template, but because I'm moving my little um, picture on the corner around, there's another way too. So I'm going to go to slide one here, and this is going to be a multiple choice, and I'm going to use pictures. I'm actually going to use the, the little candy hearts as part of the answer. So on the side here, multiple choice is where you, you can add words but I'm going to use multi-picks, so I'm going to drag it, so I'm going to put pictures in it. I'm only going to offer three for the younger kids, so I'm going to get rid of one, so I highlight it. I go over to delete. Now I've got three, but I want them all in the same row, so I'm going to highlight this box, and down below here it says container properties. I want the grid to be three, and then they show up on one. Bit too big, so I just go to the corner and size it down and bring it over. Now what I just did only shows up on this slide. Again, I could have created this on the template and then it would show up on all of them, but not all of my slides are going to be multiple choice. So I do it this way and then I'll show you what I do afterwards. I'm going to 
put in the answers. So I just click on one of these pictures. The first one will always default to the correct answer. And then the other two will be right. You can change that. And I'll show you in a moment. So I'm going to put in the answer here. So I'll click on here. Now I have already uploaded the candy hearts. But I would just go here to upload. And I could just get them from there. So I've put them in. So I'll put that in there. And I'll put other answers in. I don't like the black border here. So I go over to the side here where it says border and it's black. So I change it to transparent, which is this one with the little squares on it. Checkerboard. There we go. So now the border is gone. That looks a little bit better, but it, let's just go up to preview for a moment. And you'll see that they still these still have a black border, the individual pictures, and a gray background. I want to get rid of those. But I'm just going to test this. See how it randomizes it? So it's not always the the right answer will not always be on the left. And I'll show you where that is. Let me go back. So I'm going to, first of all, click on the individual one. You can see that there's a little lock there because it's not going to go anywhere at the moment. I'm going to change the background right here to transparent. You could add it, you could add a bright color if you wanted to. Actually, I'll do all of them while I'm there. Okay, so, so now they're transparent. And then I'll go back to this one and I'll do the border again, transparent. And I can click over to the next ones and it's still there. So now the black border is gone, the, the background is gone. Where I was talking about with the randomize, there's a couple places. One of them is here. I have to highlight the whole box. If I go down here where I change the grid, right here it says randomize items. So as long as I keep that checked, these will change around every time a student plays it, which I like. There are going to be times when you don't want it randomized, then you would just unclick it. Okay, so now if I go back and preview this, see it, there's no borders. Okay, this one is done. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do, which I was uh, sharing earlier about ways you can duplicate this without putting it in template, is to highlight the whole thing. Now, on the Mac, it is Control C, so just a straight copy, so it would be Control C, I think, for uh, PC. And then I'm going to go to the next slide and just paste it. Maybe. <laughs> there it is. Okay. And all I need to do is I need to click on the 11 there and change, go down here where it says change the image. So I'm going to change that to a 9. I can leave the 10. And maybe I'll move that to... Okay, I'll do it again. I'll just copy, or sorry, yeah, paste. And then I'm going to move it over. With these numbers right here, they sort of work with this one as well. I can, instead of having this one be the correct answer, I'll make 12 the correct answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this one. It's up here under answer options. It says wrong. I'm going to change it to correct. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change that one from correct to wrong. So now this one has a green line around it and the other two have red. So that's one thing you can do. Let's do one more for now. So there, and that was actually rather fast. Okay, that's five done already. Now, why don't I scroll down to one of the fill in the blank ones. So what I do to do a fill in the blank is I go over here to where it says fill in the blank and I drag it right on top of where I want the answer. So right on top of this heart and I'll just open up the box so that it fits. And then just like it says, double tap to edit and then this answer picker pops up. I type the answer in here, which is 13. And then I just, I, I always put numeric if it's an, I'm expecting numbers so that they don't try to use the L key. And then I'm going to use um, KG fonts. And I think the size is like 60, might be bigger. And then I hit submit. 
and so we'll close it. And so then now the number is almost exactly in. I'm just going to move this up a tiny bit. I'm just going to go and do maybe do one more. Fill in the blank. The fonts that are in this section are only the ones that you have either, either the ones that exist in Boom Learning or that you have uploaded yourself. So if you were looking for KG fonts un under your Boom Learning account, if you have not uploaded those fonts, they're not going to show for you. So there we go. Now I have a couple blank ones. So here I could just make my own. I could do, I could do a fill in the blank. I could do a multi pick. I could do a, a greater than, I could change this and do a greater than less than type thing. I always like to make a couple options in case I want to do something else. Or I could say find the missing add end. Now if you notice when I do this, I can't move it at the moment because there's a little lock right here on here on this box. So I got to click that and then I can move it and actually what I'll do is oh, this is one of the things that I don't like. I'm going to I'm going to center that and then I want to center the whole thing horizontal like that. So that's what I mean. That's why I like to do a couple blank drag some images down. I could do <clears throat> nine week. I'm size it down. Whoops. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Nine. One way to not have to keep fixing the sizes is I will duplicate this multiple times. Because so I'm going to put a blank there. Okay, let me just align this a bit. Click them all, and then I go over here to align, and I want them to be horizontally. Oh, they're pretty good, actually. Interesting. See, that's not aligned as far as I'm concerned. That's why I like PowerPoint. I can align things so much easier. Actually, if I put them really close to each other, I can put nine plus mm equals mm. Okay, let's just do one more. Okay, let's now just click on all of them and align them to the top. So that means the tops are all the same. Okay, now what I would do is change the images. So then I go change image. That's a plus sign there. Did I put pluses in here? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, plus. This one I'm going to make blank. Um, what if I have there before? Actually, I think the equal sign is purple. So let me change that color. So now they got to find the missing add end and I could just again make this a fill in the blank. You just saw that I made this one from Boom Learning and this was not a slide from PowerPoint. Now what I can do with this one is I can go up here where it says cards and click this one which it says clone the selected card and now I've got an additional one so I can just change things here oops you can't see it change image let's do 15 plus actually let's do 15 plus um, something equals 20 and now an the answer 5 will be the same <laughs> that makes it easy and then I could do a couple more of these clone again. I'll change them around a little bit more. Okay, so let's go down. Let's use 6 blank equals 13. And then let's, I'll just go in here. What I need to do in order to remove, I can't just type in 7 here because this is showing up here. I want to X that out, buy it back in there, and then I go 7 and everything else is the same. So I hit submit. So now that the 7 is showing up there before I close it. So in just this few minutes, I almost have, I have almost 20 done. And they're, they're pretty simple. There are a lot of buyers that like simplistic. They don't want them too busy because they have some students that would be completely distracted by too much stuff. I think there's a lot of stuff already. There's a lot of color on here. But again, these really didn't take that long. So I'll go back and 
put some more in, but in the meantime, let's pretend these are all done. One of the things that I do on that sheet that I showed you earlier, which again, you can find on TPT in my store, is that I usually take the back of one of them and I will write down all the different equation that I've done because just glancing at this, I have a lot of the same answers. And if I had written them down, I'd have been a little bit more intentional. But sometimes because I've done these so many times, I just kind of throw them all out and then I make changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to preview and I'm going to start with the first slide. So I make sure I'm clicked on the first slide, go up to preview and I'm going to play this and and again, I'm going to look to see what are all my answers that everything is clicking fine and I will on and then I will take a couple screenshots that I will use for covers and then eventual thumbnails for TPT. Okay? So let's just play this real quick. That, this is exactly why I test it, because I just have two wrong answers on that previous slide. So the one that has, uh, I've got to go down to about number six or number seven. Yeah, if I go to number, here it is. You can see I got a green box and I got a green box. So I got to remove that one to wrong. Again, this is why you preview them so you don't get mad customers. Okay. So that's eight, and the previous one was eight. See, I've got a lot of times I got some in, in similar one answers in them. Okay, so let's go back up to here. Let's keep going. So there are a few that I need to fix because I do have a couple numbers uh, overabundance. Well, I shouldn't say overabundance. I have a couple numbers that are like there's three or four answers or three or four questions that have that answer and there's numbers that I haven't even touched so I will change those up a bit but let's just say these are all done the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to details and I'm going to create the description for the boom cards so I go up to details this is right up here is where I'm going to add an image we're going to go to Canva in a couple minutes and I'm going to make an image there and we'll pop it in there. The name of the deck is going to be Candy Hearts Addition to 20. It's going to be right now at two, it's at 19 cards. I'd do it for 200 points, which is about $2. And then in here, I'm going to give a description. I'm going to use keywords. I'm going to talk about addition. I'm going to talk about Math Fact Fluency. There are two types of questions. I always tell what kind of types of questions there are in case they don't get a chance to see it in the preview. Multiple, whoops, multiple choice and fill in the blank. Students will find the sum and find the missing add end. And then I'll just say boom cards are great for home learning, online learning, hybrid learning, <laughs> in class math centers and whole class instruction. No prep, self grading. Audio instructions are provided. And so I, I tend to, whenever I'm doing a couple different questions. I always provide audio instructions. I have a Mac, so I will create them using GarageBand, which I will do momentarily. Acknowledgements is all of the clip art and font artists that I use. Now, I don't know, I can't remember if Kitten Clips is approved, but that's something I'm going to definitely have to check. 
there is approved list and there are definite big uh, clip art artists on TPT that do not want their stuff on Boom. Interesting enough. So please make sure you check their terms of use. I go to search and I put in keywords. Be very careful about keyword stuffing. So you don't want to keep saying addition to 20, addition to 10, addition, addition, addition. Addition to 20. And you don't need even commas. Um, math, fact, fluency, Valentine's, candy, hearts, February, missing, add end, find the sum. Okay, this is for kindergarten, grade one, and in some places that would be grade two. I go to subject, it is math, and then if you click that little triangle, I want to do elementary, play. Um, here's the other place where you can have everything randomized. So the cards themselves will randomize on this one. So the earlier one I showed you, the answers will randomize. On this one, the cards will shuffle, which is great. If you had a bunch of instructions on the first slide, you could say don't shuffle in number one. Okay, so you could type, click one here and then number one will always be there. Okay, and this, these are for if you want to keep them in sequential if you are using flow magic, which is another video. Okay. Uh, the next video I'll be doing on boom cards, I'm going to teach you uh, what to do when you want to market your stuff on TPT, which is right here. Okay. But we'll do that in another video. The next thing I need to do is I need to go into Canva and make a cover. By the way, the moment I hit the X here, everything is saved. See, it's all there. Okay, let's go to Canva. I created for a previous deck and again, Valentine's related. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up to file, make a copy. I'm going to change this to addition, addition to 20 hearts, Valentine. I'm going to change the words. I like, this is just my style. I like having a bold at the top, a big iPad, and then I'm going to get rid of that image. And the other image is sitting on my screen. So let me just find one and bring it over. Like I said, I'm going to keep everything about this just to make it easy. It makes everything much faster. And then I just have to position things back forward. And the little hand gets to go forward. This is uh, this little um, clip bar here is I. It that's a purchase from. Speaking of images, she sells transparent hands. It looks more real when you've got um, little hands playing with things. Okay, and there, I'm going to even let them pick the answer there. Okay, and that's my cover. So I'm just going to download it. I'm just going to do page one and. Pings are bigger files, but better quality. If you were to have a website and you wanted to upload this, I would I would up, upload it as a JPEG. But when I'm doing covers and I want them as clear as I can, I will do them as pings, PNGs. When I'm putting this into TPT, I'll have to put it as a JPEG. Pings are just too large for them. Okay, and I'm going to put this back with the Candy Hearts edition to 20. I'll, I put them in, the, I try to keep everything in the same spots, and it's over there. So I'm going to go out of here. I love Canva. I use it for uh, YouTube. I use it for covers and thumbnails, and I will be happy to make another um, tutorial for that. Okay, so I'm back in my, in, I'm back in Boom. I'm going to go back up to de details. I'm going to click the cover, which is right now blank. I'm going to upload, and it should be in here somewhere, right there. And I just click on there, and now the image is in there. Okay, let me just double check my listings. Okay, but yeah, for page one and everything, like I said, I'll have to just finish up some questions, but I and I will add audio. Um, uh, do I have time to add audio right now? Yes, I do. Okay, let's quickly add some audio to this. Audio is a great selling feature with your boom cards. And you can also add a little bit to the price if you wanted to. But I use GarageBand. 
Um, there are free um, apps and websites that you can quickly do a, a screen recording or an image a sound recording. Uh, I've used QuickTime before. I've used Audacity, which is an older program, but it's still out there. Let me just quickly go to GarageBand. Okay, um, when you open up GarageBand, choose a project comes in. I just automatically hit click empty project and then down in the bottom says choose and I'm just doing an audio recording create I don't know why this when this started but they automatically put on the ticking so you gotta make sure you click these off and oh you can't quite see it in the screen here let me just see if I can let's try it like this okay so as I mentioned I take I make sure these are not clicked and then I'm going to hit record which is the red button the sentence in in the cards says find the sums or find the sum. I may also add a little instruction like click on the correct answer or or fill in the blank heart, something like that. Okay, so here we go. Find the sum. Click on the correct answer. You go up to share, export, and I'm going to call it just so I can find it. Um, candy hearts. Find the sum and export. Whoops, I probably should have added click over these ones. So I'm going to do one, another one. Find the sum. Type your answer on the blank heart. So share, export, and then I'll go candy, heart, find the sum, fill in. <laughs> okay, just so it's a little bit different. Okay, and that's all I need. I just had two. There are times when I have to change, I have a different sentence on some of my questions. So then I'm, I can make upwards of 20, but that's all I need to do. I can get right out of here. I don't need to save it and we're out. Close, quit, oh, reopen, boom. Okay, so I am going to put a sound bite right here. So I find sound over here. And because when I do it in the template box, whatever I do in the template box gets copied into everything. And now I need to upload the sounds. So it's an MP3 Candy Hearts. There they go. So I'm going to I'm going to click on both of them. Put them both in the sound files. And there they are. So to find the sum. Now this is going to work for all the ones that is multiple choice that are multiple choice but when I get down to here they are not multiple choice so I'm going to click on here I'm going to change the sound to the second one and it says in so it, it's just got a short form of it and then I'm going to do the same for this one and one of the things I have to stay mindful of is I'm going to duplicate some things I just need to remember to do that and this one's already there so now I've got an audio in there. And again, many buyers like the addition of the audio. All I need to do is after I finish these, I've got my image, I've got my details in there. All I need to do then is hit publish to store and away we go. Ah, whew, okay, so someone asked me how long does it take from beginning to end. If I have it planned, if I've laid it out, I can usually do them from beginning to end in one hour. If I am struggling with planning and things like that, it could take longer. If I'm doing a fancier deck such as hidden, a hidden picture, flow magic, a coloring code type thing, then it can take me longer. But a standard deck, 20 to 30 slides, basically one hour for me. So the next video is gonna be on school, the TPT school access. I've had a couple of questions about it, whether I think it's worthwhile, you know, should I join it, that sort of stuff. I attended the, well, I didn't attend it. I listened to the recording of the recent TPT town hall meeting. They talked about it there. I did some extra research. I went online and, and uh, looked for some things. And so I'm, the next video is going to be on the school access because you have until the end of February to sign up for the next year which actually starts july 1st and then you're going to see part two of the boom cards all right 
So wherever you are in the world, I hope you and your family are staying safe, being healthy, take care of one another. And we'll catch you in this video. So this is the one of the other boom card tutorials that you can watch, or you can watch this playlist. They're both pretty good. <laughs> See ya.